We're at the office of New York City's chief medical examiner. We've all seen those police procedural shows on TV. CSI, NCIS, Blue Bloods, Law and Order, Bones. But how realistic are they? Basically what they're doing on those shows is combining the roles of several people into one to make it more interesting. So they're, they're taking the things that a district attorney might do, or they're taking some things that a medical examiner does, they're taking some things that a police officer does, and they're taking things that a forensic scientist does, and they're giving all those responsibilities to the forensic scientist. Meet Andrew Schweikart from Northport, Long Island, PhD from John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and currently a criminalist for the city of New York. A criminalist is someone at our agency who examines articles of evidence from a crime for body fluids like blood, semen, and saliva, and tests those fluids to determine if they are of human origin, to determine if they are indeed the fluids that we think they might be, and then to determine if we can get a DNA profile from those fluids. Besides our homicide and sex crimes and property crimes units, we also have a team of scientists dedicated to solving missing persons cases. And also, uh, we still have a team of scientists working on World Trade Center identifications. Quick, what does DNA stand for? Deoxyribonucleic acid. He's good. DNA is a molecule found in the nucleus of every cell in our body, except red blood cells. DNA is our genetic blueprint. It's a pretty safe bet that no two people on Earth have the same DNA. With certain exceptions, like identical twins would have. But as human beings, everyone's DNA has some things in common. About 99% of human DNA is identical across all humans. That's what gives us all two ears and two eyes and arms and legs. But we're looking at that very small fraction of DNA that is unique to each person. The first time DNA evidence was successfully used to prosecute a case was in 1986. Shortly after, Maury Povich announced for the first time, you are not the father. Before the introduction of DNA typing, law enforcement had to rely on other kinds of physical evidence. All identification is by eye, for no machine has yet been devised to classify fingerprints every one of which is different. DNA is superior to other methods of identification because it gives us very powerful statistics. Um, when we determine a match in our laboratory, typically the match statistics are somewhere in the neighborhood of one in several trillion. The samples that we work with can be very tiny and we can still get useful data from it. So in this tube is a very small volume of liquid, two microliters. We can work with stains that originate from amount of liquid this small and still successfully get DNA profiles. Sometimes DNA evidence is not visible to the naked eye. So Dr. Schweikart showed me a special room that requires protective glasses. I don't see any stains. I don't see anything. It's a hat. It's a cap. This is an ultraviolet light source or an alternate light source that we use to examine evidence for stains that we couldn't see with our own eyes. And now look at all this. That's Sweat. That's right. We wouldn't be getting the DNA from the sweat itself. Basically, if I was to make a cutting of this, we'd be getting the DNA from skin cells that were rubbed off with the sweat. Sometimes DNA is degraded or contaminated before it gets to the lab. Or maybe there's no viable tissue or body fluids from which to extract a sample. Dr. Schweikart specializes in working with another kind of DNA found in bones and hair. I work in a team called the mitochondrial DNA unit. And there we work with a type of DNA called mitochondrial DNA. It's less susceptible to degradation. I've always been interested in, in science and law enforcement. I also didn't see myself as a police officer walking a beat and carrying a firearm and uh, having to chase people and make arrests. And uh, forensic science just seemed like uh, a natural compromise. John Jay was everything to my career. I was in contact with some, some of the most talented people in my field. I was working in state-of-the-art facilities and learning there. So uh, CUNY opened so many doors to me, and without it, I don't think I'd be working at the medical examiner's office that just gave me such a great foundation to build off of. What I like about my job is that we're always helping people, and what I especially like about it is that we're not necessarily playing for one side or the other. We like to think of ourselves as advocates for the truth. 
If you look in our lobby, we have a big sign that says science serving justice. It's not science serving the police, it's not science serving the prosecutor. We're just totally neutral, looking for the right answer, the truth. Barry Mitchell, study with the best.